views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome to Knowledge Book Radio with Marge Potasek. Marge was searching for the purpose of her life and the truth that would tie everything together to make sense of what was taught and what was happening on our planet, the fire that was creating all the smoke. Through many experiences, she was finally led to the knowledge book that provided all the answers. Marge is now talking about this gift to humanity on Knowledge Book Radio, so all can be united in peace, love, and harmony. This live call-in show at 1-800-930-2819 is amazing. So get ready to hear about the Knowledge Book. Here's your host, Marge Potasek. And hello, welcome everyone. It's glad to be back here today um, and talk to you about the Knowledge Book, topics from the Knowledge Book. Hope everyone is having a great time wherever they are. Um, We're doing well here. And last week we read the first fascicle of the Knowledge Book and we were supposed to actually be talking about the Salvation Program. What is it? Who qualifies? Um, And what is the result and who does it apply to? But this time, we are going to be discussing this. So let's dive right in as to what this salvation plan is, what this salvation program is, and see what it is, and see how everyone gets to get on board. So the first thing I want to mention is, like, let's go think as to us and to others that were a baby. How did they actually get to be a full functioning adult that is able to make conscious decisions, that's able to walk around, is able to accomplish things and have babies of their own? Because as everyone knows, when a baby is born, they're completely helpless. They can do nothing for themselves. Someone has to feed them, to clothe them, to change them, to give, provide them shelter, to give them guidance. And if you think about it, if you leave a baby, out without any kind of a support structure, support system, and ability to continue to allow the body to grow, then they die. They are not able to survive on their own. So over the first year of a baby life, the parents are there, whoever is there, to take care of that baby, um, to feed them, to shelter them, to clothe them, provide everything for that baby that that baby needs. Now, of course, they're not going to be fed initially it's liquid food, then it becomes more and more solid food as the stomach is able to then learn how to digest whatever's coming in and in bigger and bigger chunks. And eventually the baby is able to eat um, solid food and then is able to chew its own food on its own and continue to grow in that way. And again, physiologically, as they're developing, first it is able to sort of pick its head up Um, then it's able to roll over, then it's able to hold itself up when it's being held, then it's able to sit, eventually is able to crawl, and then finally to be able to walk. So this is the physical manifestation of the human's evolution of going from a baby to a functioning adult. However, at the same time, besides the physical care of the baby and the physical development of the baby, something else is happening. There is a consciousness, there is a social culture that's being introduced as well. So the baby also learns to develop its consciousness skills, its brain powers, its judging and judgment ability through the invisible kind of teaching that the surroundings, that the people around them instill in that baby. Meaning, eventually it learns to keep themselves out of danger, like not sticking their finger in the fire, not playing with matches, um, staying away from knives or knowing how to deal with a knife that's dull at first and eventually becomes more and more sharp as we're going along. And this way, over time, it learns how to interact 
with other children, with other adults, and is able to socialize, okay? So the entire goal of that baby's first development and that person's first development is to be able to be physically and mentally socially safe and sound and to be able to integrate with the cultural guidelines and those are specifically geared to protect that life and allow that individual to continue to live. So this is kind of an example as to what we as humanity in a broader sense have been going through for millennia, okay? Um, prior to the 6,000 year program that has just finished in the year 1999, there were other plans and other programs in order to evolve the human. Um, and what has happening, what has been happening is that these programs that are designed to evolve the human to the point of the human being a genuine human, we went through a step-by-step -step process. So just like the baby goes through a step-by-step -step process of development, then we also went through a step-by-step -step process as far as our learning and education is concerned. So we go to school. When we go to school, we go first grade. When we graduate from first grade, pass the test of first grade, we get entry into the second grade. And we will pass the second grade, we go to the third and so on up the line, and we're getting more and more knowledge. And whatever is given to us then, let's say in the fifth grade, is greater than we were given in the first grade, but it deals with the same topic. It deals with the same foundation that was placed in the first grade. So we, our learning expands. And this 6,000 year period that we had just finished was our own step-by-step -step program, a schoolroom that allowed us to get used to specific cosmic energies for us to be actually comfortable with those energies without hurting us, without turning us into cinder um, and allowing us to continue to live as humans, okay? So just like we have, if we go into college, if we're taking math courses, then we need to take some math. And in order for take to take calculus, you had to take pre-calc. In order to take pre-calc, you had to have algebra, whatever stages of algebra that you had to go through. So in the same way, the religious dimension, which were the Kabbalah, the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Psalms of David, the Quran, the religions of the Far East, all of these were our particular schools that allowed us to learn a specific type of activity, a specific type of uh, formal practice, and that allowed, through that formal practice, that allowed us to absorb more and more cosmic energies. Now, the most successful program was the program of Christ, Jesus, and he's the one that came in with a love frequency, and that allowed us to be um, relaxed and allow the cosmic energies to then come in. So basically the result of the religious training that we've been undergoing for the past 6,000 years is humanity's being able to integrate with the moral code and achieving the alpha frequency. And the alpha frequency is characterized by giving from the essence, but expecting nothing in return. And once you're at that stage, that's when you are able to absorb cosmic energies very easily. So once we finished with that particular set of guidelines, that particular set of school classes, then we came in to 1900. And in 1900, that's when the start of a very accelerated evolution program came, came to be. And those who have succeeded in their prerequisites, meaning those who have graduated and have been habituated to the religious dimension energies and frequencies, now they're enrolled in the fast track class, the Calc class. And this is known as the salvation plan of humanity. And this is working in accordance with the Alpha Entrance Omega Exit Project. Okay. Um, Sorry. Okay. So again, this salvation plan started in 1900 
And in 1900, we came into a 300-year program known as the Cosmic Age. Now, this Cosmic Age is of 300 years is composed of three 100-year chunks, also called the Cosmic Age. And we started in 1900. This cos Cosmic Age of 300 years will finish in 2199. And it went through particular stages as well the 20th century or the 1900s, during the first part of this century, first half of this century, there was a preparation program. In other words, this was a pre-program for the second part of the 20th century. And then in the second half of the 20th century, they started, we were started to receive truths. And if you remember around the 1960s, 1970s, continuing on, all kinds of information was coming in to us from people who became prominent and they were telling us things that we normally would not have heard in the 1940s and the 1930s. There was a shift in what was being told to us. We are being prepared for something bigger that's coming on later. And then in the last quarter of the 20th century, that's when we started the direct programs of activity. This is where the mission program started to take effect. And this is where the 20th, 20th century being the preparation for the 21st century, which is where we are now. And this 21st century is a trench century. It's a century of activity and selection. The 22nd centuries will be different tests for humanity. So that's the basic outline. We finished with the first cosmic age, which is the 20th century. We're now in the 21st century, which is the second cosmic age, and the 22nd century will be the third cosmic age. Now, everyone needs to be enrolled in this program, the Salvation Plan, in order to be able to graduate successfully and to arrive at the seventh evolution dimension which is the manifestation boundary of humanity. Now, when people are buying a car, they always want to know, how do you get from zero to 60? How fast can I race down the road or how fast can the car go to allow me to escape from a dangerous situation? So when we come to this planet, we come in at zero frequency. And we need to somehow get ourselves to the seventh frequency. And all this has to be accomplished by all of us on this planet in the next 200 years that are allocated now that are remaining, okay? And once we're at the seventh dimension, which is the seventh frequency, that allows us to then integrate with our spiritual totality and become genuine humans at the eighth dimension. So we kind of gave a broad outline as to what's going on. Um, and... Now we'll go into the nitty-gritty of what the salvation plan actually entails. Because just like the previous religions, the previous doctrines had a specific way of doing things. If you go into uh, the Kabbalah studies, if you go into the Torah, there is a different way of doing things than in the Christian dimension. And... When you go from the Christian dimension into the Quran, that has a specific set of guidelines in that dimension as well. So just like the others have their own specific way of doing things, and including the far religions of the Far East, who also have a specific way of doing things that are very different from the other three, However, no matter how it was being done, the entire purpose was to allow the human who was practicing those specific doctrines at that time to allow them to absorb those energies that those practices were giving to those humans at that time and get used to them gradually over time. And then they would graduate from A to B to C to D. And right now we're at E. Um, so what is the salvation plan? Specifically, the knowledge book also has its own way of doing things. And those are the individual studies and group studies. Um, 
So we covered some of those studies previously in the previous programs. We covered the reading program and the writing program. We kind of mentioned here and there that there are councils and flowers and totalities of 18, but we haven't gone into depth over them. That we'll be covering in um, one of the following um, shows. So, but those are, again, specific programs, and each one of them has their own specific guidelines and has a way of doing things. But the entire purpose, again, is to be us to be able to draw down those energies and frequencies for which we are ready. Now, the celestial authorities um, have been around for a while. We've been around for a while as well, and we have um, been guided for millennia. And throughout this time, they've learned what works and what doesn't work for humans. Now, humans are very special beings. Humans are the only beings who have the capacity, who have the ability to transcend dimensions with thought power. And it is because we can do this that evolution was deemed exigent for us because the human who cannot control their thoughts, who cannot discipline their thoughts, then has the ability to go into dimensions through thought and cause mischief in those dimensions. And because we could cause this kind of mischief in other dimensions, then the, you know, the powers that be, the celestial authorities, set out and find a way that allows the human to evolve, to keep that tremendous capacity of, of transcending dimensions with thought power, but at the same time use that as a positive tool to help the universe and help the cosmos as opposed to potentially destroying it. So this is where that 6,000-year program came in, and they had previous programs prior to that as well. Um, so what works? and that's why those sacred books came to be, um, is the books that were given to us. So I see the celestial authorities as, as pragmatists and scientists. Well, let's try this on them. Okay, this doesn't work, this doesn't work. Oh, this works. Okay, let's expand this program. Um, well, that part didn't work, that part didn't work, that part didn't work. Okay, let's exp oh, this one is working, let's expand this one. So step by step over time, as we've been incarnating and reincarnating and reincarnating, we've been guided to those texts, those teachings, that methodology that allowed us to absorb more and more energies without hurting our physical form and at the same time are allowing our spiritual form, our thought power to grow higher and higher and be able to evolve as well. And this time, instead of a sacred book being given to us, we have been endowed with the knowledge book, which is a book of learning and science, meaning where the secret, sacred books were given to us um, and giving us truths and ideas about how things work, we were not really given the nitty gritty behind of how things work. But now those ideas, those concepts are being expanded and what is actually happening is now being given to us as the truths in the knowledge book. And it is also a cosmic book of light that's specifically being done in the 21st century that gives specific energies and frequencies in the 21st century that gradually takes us from the 72nd energy dimension, which is the alpha frequency, which was the result of going through the religious education training program. And it takes us from that 72nd energy dimension to the 76th energy dimension. And this is where we are able to claim our spiritual totality and become genuine humans. So besides the knowledge book and the specific programs um, included in that, the, the path designed by the celestial authorities that is presented in the knowledge book, the actual place where we live is also part of the salvation plan. This is the world dimension where we live and experience with the dimension of form, where we live in the dimension of form and space and time. So this is our schoolroom. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is the school of hard knocks. 
that wakes us up if necessary. However, if we follow the path design, then it becomes easy and safe and serene, and you get to the goal fast and easy. And everything is perfectly set. The stage is perfectly set. All the characters, all the places, all the scenery, anything and everything that we need for us to be able to learn about ourselves and overcome ourselves and go up the evolution stairs is provided in this world school. Now, we've been coming here for millennia and we have come back to where we started from. And this is from which place we will be able to make our exit. Um, and again, we'll be perfectly ready to get ourselves habituated to the next level of cosmic energies. The third part of the salvation plan, besides the environment and the book, is the human body itself. It is a perfectly designed, perfectly prepared, and perfectly prepared for the evolution on the fast track, the accelerated evolution plan. Now again, anyone who's finished with their religious fulfillment has passed the tests of the religious schoolroom, are now perfectly positioned to continue their current class to learn about ourselves and overcome ourselves, meaning overcoming our egos. So this is also where we are in an environment where the we are growing, whether it's spiritually or bodily or, or physically, everything is growing. We are evolving from step A to step B. I'm reminded of a story of a lobster. When a lobster grows, it has a shell that doesn't grow. So it comes to the point where a lobster who is growing becomes very uncomfortable in its shell. It becomes painful. So what does the lobster do? It goes under a rock, takes off his shell, and grows a new bigger shell that fits its current size. And again, the lobster is growing. The shell is too small. It gets painful. It gets uncomfortable. Under the rock it goes again gets rid of its old shell, and grows a new one. And that's actually what's happening to us. We are lobsters in the world classroom. And we absolutely need to feel uncomfortable. We need to feel pain in order for us to do something about it. If the lobster decided, okay, oh, I got a pain. It's really uncomfortable here. Let me pop a pain kill. Let me pop a tranquilizer. And what happens? The lobster's body will grow and grow. He will do nothing about it. And eventually that lobster will suffocate. Moral of the stories, we need to be something different tomorrow than we were yesterday. We need to be doing something tomorrow and today that is based on and is a growth out of what we did yesterday. So we need to shift ourselves, our, of our current selves, and go into the next level of evolution to allow us to grow, okay? And actually, when you think about it, literally, our bodies are different every second of the day because we have regenerated or regrown different cells. We have shucked off because the cells are worn out. Everything is changing. So literally, on the physical level, we are never the same person we were yesterday. However, the point being that the body that we are getting is now transforming through the programs of the knowledge book, and it is able to absorb more and more of the cosmic energies into it without being hurt. And what else is the salvation plan? The salvation plan is the dimension of tests, where we learn everything through its opposite. In the religious dimension, that's when we are the babies we are always taken care of. I want this, I need that, we pray for this, we pray for that. We are babies in the religious dimension and we are nurtured so we could become adults. However, now is the time of the up-pointing triangle where God is, okay, in the religious dimension, that's when we were in the up-pointing triangle. God is always giving to us and we are receiving. Now, we are graduated into the universal dimension, or we have the potential to graduate into the universal dimension. And this is where we need to pass the graduation exams. And this is the downpointing triangle, where we need to reach God and attain that dimension. And this is the reason why this accelerated current plan for us to be adults and know what to do and be responsible for what we are doing 
that's what we need to accomplish. And the salvation plan also consists of the cascading cosmic energies given to our planet. Now, those are varied over time. Previously, we were given alpha, and that's love, and that was given to everyone. But now that alpha frequency, that alpha energies, are being only given to those who are truly devotees in their religion. And this is where people are kind and help everyone. And this is where the essence heart is valid. And this is the training program done through love, tolerance, forgiveness, and patience. Then came the beta energies. And these are energies and frequencies of intellect and logic, scientific and spatial knowledge. And here, the essence heart is not valid because value is placed on intellect, on action. And this allows a human to acquire responsibility and a strong personality. Now we're in gamma energies, and these are scanning and selection and weeding out energies. And this is how the social authorities can pick out those humans or perfect humans, and this is the field of mission. Gamma energies eliminates those who cannot make the intellect and the essence heart into one. And then when it sees that the intellect and the essence heart have not been unified, then it sends those individuals back to the world chaos program to finish up evolution. And then once they finish up their evolution, they have another chance at the um, program of the knowledge book and continue on their path. And what happens? The cosmic energy, such as control waves or waves of evolution, and they display the genuine personalities and provide examinations of patience, of self-sacrifice, of tolerance, personality, and responsibility. So we've covered an overview of what the salvation plan is. So maybe now it's a good time to go to take a short break. And I'm March Batazic, and you're listening to the Knowledge Book Radio with March Batazic. So we'll stop for now, and we'll continue once we come back. Stay tuned. Thank you. Are you looking for the perfect setting for your next workshop or retreat? At Spirit Fire Meditative Retreat Center, cultivating consciousness is what we do best. Our guests count on us to create an atmosphere that supports serenity and well-being. We lead from the heart and create space for the mind. Freshly prepared meals designed with local and organic ingredients, 95 acres of beautiful woods and pastures, and a facility built with green in mind. This is what you'll find at Spirit Fire. For more information, visit spiritfireretreatcenter.com. Gifted intuitive healer and spiritual teacher, Sarah Luce, brings her unique style to the hit show, Small Steps, Big Breakthrough Radio on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in each month as Sarah turns reality on end and shows us how to experience expansive results with simple yet powerful steps. Expect an enlightening bend on what you currently believe is possible. For show details and upcoming topics, visit SarahLoose.com. That's S-A-R-A-L-O-O-S.com. In this day and age, if you don't reinvent yourself, you may never find balance, peace, and the sustainable life that is your birthright. Angela Watson Robertson, known as the Reinvention Warrior and the host of Breakthrough Radio Show Masters of Reinvention, is here to help you reinvent every area of your life. Tune in and hear from the best in the personal transformation business and discover tips and tools for positive change. Live every month on Transformation Talk Radio. Be you plus live your purpose equals joy. That's the motto of Unstuck Joy with Vicki Todd. Vicki believes you were born with gifts that are meant to make the world brighter. Each show will feature an art visioning journal prompt to help you create your way to soul clarity. If you're ready to get unstuck and create more joy, this show is for you. Tune in every month on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information, visit VickiWorldArt.com. 
Brand consultant Jen Morgan is here with Radically Distinct Radio to help you take control of your future and maximize your brand's power to produce results. Whether you're an individual trying to reinvent yourself and launch a new venture, or you're an executive trying to reposition your company to modernize your sales and marketing programs, Jen Morgan and the Rad Method empower you to play to your strengths and show up in the world as your most powerful brand. To learn more, go to jenmorgan.com. That's Jen with two N's, morgan.com, or call 206 9 Is traditional medicine not working for you? Do you still feel as if your health isn't 100%? Here at the Holistic Medical Center, Dr. Nushin Darvish and the qualified staff look through the dimensions of wellness and start a healing plan prioritized to your needs. Our physicians assess the whole you until complete health is achieved. Get the help you need by visiting drdarvish.com or call 425-451-451. 0404. And we're back on the Knowledge Book Radio with March Potasic, and I have been March Potasic, and am our March Potasic. So we've been talking about the Salvation Program. What is it? What is the goal? Who does it apply to and what is the result? So in the previous section, we covered what it was. And in the current section, we'll talk about who it applies to. Um, And who does it apply to? It applies to all of us. Everyone who has incarnated on this planet at this point has a mission. Everything has a mission. Meaning the couches, the tables, the trees, the rocks, the soil, the ocean, everything and everything that exists has a mission. And each one is here to accomplish that mission. Um, And who qualifies for the salvation program? Everyone. Because eventually every one of us has to go through the salvation program. Every one of us has to get through from the 72nd energy, actually to the inner 72nd energy dimension first, then from there to the 76th energy dimension. So in the next 200 years, less than 200 years, all of us who still haven't finished our religious training, needs to finish that religious training and then do the Omega Exit program, which is a salvation program. And all of us and all of those who have finished with their religious training, who are currently in the Knowledge Book programs, need to be able to get to the 76th energy dimension by mission work in the knowledge book programs. So that's the reading program, the writing program, the council, the flower, and the totality of 18. Okay. So that's us. That's existent on this planet right now. That's those beings who will be incarnating until the 20, in, until the 22nd century. And we are also having beings coming in from other dimensions who have still yet to do their godly evolution. And this is their coming in as well. So one of the reasons why we're experiencing the chaos that's on this planet is because we have different beings coming in from different dimensions. We have people at different dimensions. Every individual is at their own specific dimension. So when we're talking about unification, when we're talking about unity, it becomes very difficult because every one of us actually feels that our own particular plan is the best because it works for me and we want everyone else to be just like us. And it doesn't work that way. What it does work is this. Everyone who is at their own dimension will proceed through their own particular evolution life program for their particular evolution program that they had plan of destiny that they had designed for themselves in conjunction with the celestial authorities. And everyone eventually will get to the knowledge book and everyone will eventually go through the process of the knowledge book. And the purpose of the knowledge book is to gradually take us through the knowledge it gives us, through the truth that it gives us, and more specifically through the energies and frequencies that it gives us and allows us then to gradually go from step A to step B, meaning alpha to beta, alpha to omega, and allows us go from the 18th 
evolution dimension to the 19th evolution dimension. So this is where we are. And everyone on this planet is here to accomplish this evolution. Now, if you look around yourselves, there are beings who seem like they're completely evil, they're completely malicious, and what are they doing? And um, this may be a surprise for some of us, and they are here because they have a negative mission. In order for us to go through the current age that we're going through, which is the age of the upside down triangle, the universal program where we go through tests, we need to have those individuals around ourselves that provide those tests. So if we need to learn love, then we need the opposite being hate. If we need to learn tolerance, we need to have someone that's doing the opposite in patience at us for us to be able to learn the tolerance. So someone has to be out there and those beings that have the negative mission, they have a very difficult mission. That's much easier than being the missionary of the positive side. So those negativities that exist, exist specifically for us to be able to go through this school, go through this evolution plan and be able to successfully exit from Omega. Okay, so everyone is qualified and everyone needs to go through step by step and eventually all of us will be unified. How will we attain unity? All of us will maintain our own individuality. All of us will be our own particular aspect of the totality that is the consciousness of God or the consciousness of Allah. However, all of us will be at the same energy and frequency level which means we'll be unified at the same energy and frequency level. We'll be all, to quote a term, on the same wavelength. And that's how we will be unified, each with our own specific talents and aspects, however unified at the same energy frequency level. Okay. Now, even though all of us are qualified, only those individuals who have actually graduated from the religious dimension can come into the knowledge book. Because again, the knowledge book comes in, starts out at a very high frequency. If you are not accustomed, if you are not habituated to those energies and frequencies and the expansion of the truth and giving of the truth that the knowledge book gives us, then we may be shocked both spiritually and physically, which means the knowledge book protects us and doesn't let us know that the knowledge book exists. And eventually when we are ready, that's when you will find, you will meet someone that will talk to you about the knowledge book. You'll find something on the internet about the knowledge book. Somehow, somewhere, someone will send you a mission day fascicule. Somewhat, somewhere, you will find out about the knowledge book. I personally found out about the knowledge book in England when I went to Glastonbury. So everyone has their own particular way of getting to it, but you don't get to it until you are ready for it. Okay. And then the knowledge book takes over, and the knowledge book then takes us from the 72nd, which is the 18th evolution dimension, which is alpha, and it takes us to the 76th energy, which is the 19th dimension, or omega, and it does this through the light photon cyclone technique. Um, and this allows us to be filled with only those energies and frequencies that we are accustomed to and it takes us a little bit further and gradually over time, we absorb more and more energies and frequencies, absorb more, gain more consciousness and are able to progress on an evolutionary path. Now, the objective here is for every one of our cells, every one of our cells to be 100% full of the entire energy dimension of omega, which means omega-1, omega-2, omega-3, omega-4, omega-5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So these are the energies that our bodies need to get accustomed to and our bodies need to be able to draw into itself so that every one of our cells is completely filled with these energies. The other thing that we need to be completely filled with is the fifth dimension energy, the fifth power. And this is a light power energy. This is a cosmic cyclone power energy that we need to absorb. And this is the plan for this current um, next 200 years. 
for us to be able to be 100% with that as well. And we need first to go to Turkey to get engrafted with that energy um, or meet someone who has been engrafted already and has filled up their cells 100% and at which point they're able to then give those energies to others. Or we can, if not that path, do the reading program with the third edition version of the knowledge book where you have put your signatures and the dates and printed your name in the knowledge book on the front part of the knowledge book. And in which case the knowledge book will give you the fifth dimension energies as well. Okay, um, so who is qualified? Everyone. What is the goal? To be able to successfully get prepared for and exit from the dimension of Omega. Now, I haven't mentioned up until this point that if you would like, well, we would answer questions. Um, if you text them to 973-787-7035, um, and of course you can reach me by MMJP. 99 at gmail.com. That's Mary Mary John Peter 99 at gmail.com. Our website is www.usa.theknowledgebook.net. Okay, and now it's time to take another break. Um, and I'm March Batazic, and you're listening to the Knowledge Book Radio with March Batazic. So we'll stop for now and continue when we come back as to what the results are. The Truth is Funny, Shift Happens with Colette Marie Steffen is excited to welcome Karen Benton as a monthly guest host. Tune in on the third Wednesday of each month at 8 a.m. Pacific time to regain confidence and trust in your capacity to create change in your life, your health, your family, and your well-being. Karen Benton is a mother, nurse practitioner, certified body talk practitioner, Franklin Method instructor, and owner of Limitless Living LLC. For more information about Karen, visit KarenBenton.com. Gifted intuitive healer and spiritual teacher, Sarah Luce, brings her unique style to the hit show, Small Steps, Big Breakthrough Radio, on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in each month as Sarah turns reality on end and shows us how to experience expansive results with simple yet powerful steps. Expect an enlightening bend on what you currently believe is possible. For show details and upcoming topics, visit SarahLoose.com. That's S-A-R-A-L-O-O-S.com. Gain powerful insight and practical tools to support you on your spiritual journey. Access your higher self and tune in every second and fourth Thursday at 12 p.m. Pacific to A Life Untethered with Andrew Martin. And now, co-host Jeremy Nudell, Walking the Path of Freedom. Andrew is a highly attuned intuitive oracle, energy worker, spiritual teacher, and international radio host. For more about Andrew and his services, visit andrewmartin.energy. Known for his keen sense of humor, contagious smile, and extensive esoteric wisdom, EJ translates deep spiritual wisdom into practical advice to empower you to live your happiest, most fulfilled experience. Mystic Living Radio, Deep Spiritual Wisdom, Practical Advice with EJ, Eliyahu Jihan. This hit show delivers profound experiences for all who want to live life to their deepest desires. Tune in monthly for Mystic Living Radio. Learn more by visiting vitaltransformation.org. Are you stuck in unhealthy habits, toxic relationships, or low self-esteem? Do you crave a life of inspiration, love, self-acceptance, and fun? Sounds like you're on the verge on the verge to your next big thing. Join Laura Richer, host of On The Verge Radio, helping you use your breakdown for a breakthrough, overcome life's greatest challenges, and live the life you want and deserve. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio or visit seattlehealinghypnosis.com for more information. Are you feeling stagnant or blocked in your love life, career, health, or finances? Experiencing difficulty focusing or setting and achieving goals? Tune in to Spiritual Diagnostics Radio with psychic visionary healers Carol Dorian and Justice Welling. Discover the cause and effect of unwanted patterns in life. Tune in every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information, visit spiritualdeed.com.
And we're back on Knowledge Book Radio with Marge Patasek, and we've been talking about the Salvation Program. What is it? What does it do? And what the results right now we'll be talking about. So what are the results? After you've gone through this program of the Salvation Plan, where we've gone, you know, we have the plan itself, the actual programs themselves. We've got the Knowledge Book being given to humanity at this specific point in time. Um, we got the place, we've got the dimension of all dominating the absolute, where which is our schoolroom. And this is where we learn all the lessons we need to learn and we get on the evolution track and go slowly up or quickly up our evolution track. We've got the bodies that we have come in with. We have the plans that we have come in with. We have the mission that we have come in with. And when you put it all together and actually work whatever is given to us according to the guidelines that are given to us, then we become genuine humans. We are allowed, then we're given permission to go into the advanced dimension. Now, from the time of our inception, meaning our first initial spark of spiritual, our first spiritual moat of, of that spiritual totality and around which was encased the crude matter form, Throughout that time, we come, we were created and came in from the spiritual dimension, and we're going now to the technological dimension. We're going from religion, and we're going to science. We're going from um, being taken care of to taking care of others. Uh, we're going into science. We're going into learning. We're going into technological dimension. And we're going into very intense high energy dimensions. So if you think about an egg, if you cook the egg very slowly, and I've seen some cookbooks that put the egg into an oven at a very low temperature, but cook that egg over long periods of time, that egg has a different texture, a different substance, and it tastes different. However, if you put an egg in a microwave and zap it at high power for, you know, minute, two minutes, three minutes, that egg explodes. So this is why we've been going through all these training programs, the religious program, and now this program is for us who are like those eggs to be able to absorb and hold on to and resonate at higher and higher energies and frequencies and therefore have the knowledge that is being given to us now that tells us how things work, how things are put together, wh who we are, what we are, how we got there. And that's where we would come in and actually know what's going on and therefore our thoughts become more and more positive, which means we will be allowed to go into those high intense energy dimension without being destroyed. Okay, so what is the actual result of going through these programs? Number one, your essence heart, which is the love and our intellect, which is uh, sorry, let's do that again. Essence heart is the alpha and the intellect, which is the beta, unify. And they come together and they function together in order to be our own guiding system. What is the result? We arrive at the 72nd, 76th energy dimension or the seventh evolutionary dimension and we become genuine humans. Now, what does a genuine human look like and what does a genuine human do? Number one, that genuine human has totally positive thoughts. There is never an inkling of doing harm to anyone or being angry at anyone or talking about or disparaging anyone. That individual is totally positive. It is fun to be around that individual because that individual exudes positive energy. And what else does that genuine human do? That genuine human has respect for the human everywhere and anywhere, meaning there is always this love and respect and they treat everyone well and they denigrate themselves but raise everybody else to a higher platform. They are those who are on mission and they are the ones who are able to use their triangle of intellect, logic and awareness and when that triangle is engaged, and that is engaged only if you're in a mission program and successfully carrying out that mission program, 
that means that you are totally connected to the system, to the powers that be. And even though we're working and doing everything in the world dimension, which is the world of chaos, by our intellect, logic, and awareness triangles being intact and being completely you know, fused, where nothing can get in, we are connected to the guidance of the higher powers and we are removed from the chaos of the world. We are removed from this nitty-gritty bump and grind and, and um, negativity that's around us. We, it's almost like we're separated from the world and we're watching what's going on in the world as if you're watching a TV screen because our being in this dimension separates us from the world dimension. And those individuals who are genuine humans, they have their, keep their own personalities in the background, meaning they take in what's coming in. As it's coming in, if it needs to be dealt with, they, they deal with it without going into a panic, without being afraid, without doing anything that, that's disruptive. And they keep their mission responsibility in the foreground, meaning their task, their job is to take in the energies as much as they can at their particular evolution level and then through either the thought process or reflecting from cells. So some energies are coming into our bodies and we reflect these energies to the surrounding area, which means when we come to a focal point, when we um, do our council studies, when we read, when we write, when we do all these programs, we absorb more and more of those energies, and as we're going along and we're doing whatever it is we need to do, go to the job, go shopping, pick up the kids from school, drop the kids off from school, um, you know, travel somewhere, do whatever, go on vacation, wherever we go, we take those energies with us because we are going there, and they automatically are reflected to the surrounding area, and in which case the people around us are also going on a faster evolution path, okay? And the other individual has tolerance. That individual is modest. Um, you don't, there, there's humility. There, there is acceptance. Um, the ego is left far behind. The ego is the place, is the thing that allows us to function in the world dimension. It is the thing that allows us to provide food for ourselves, to provide food for that baby that we're taking care of, that allows us to have the wherewithal to live and exist in this plane. However, ego is left behind. Ego is not accepted into the higher dimensions. So what is seen in those individuals who have accomplished this program or on the way to accomplishing this program is more and more altruism, caring for others before you care for yourselves. Now, there is something that I got reminded is that, you know, there was like this one skit when you're taking care of others more than yourself. Well, this is the opposite. If you count money, it's like one for you, one for me, two for you, one, two for me, one, three for you, one, two, three for me. So this is not what you'll see an individual do who has altruism and who has gone through and is going through the mission program of the knowledge book. That individual is able to share both in the material and the moral sense. They are able to help those around themselves who need help. However, this is always guided by the intellect because love, giving, always giving, may not necessarily always give positive results, meaning you may still be treating an individual like a baby, giving, giving, baby, giving, nurturing, 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 when that individual is... 25, 50, 60 years old, and they should be doing that for themselves, be able to be an adult for themselves. That individual who is a genuine human loves nature, loves humanity, and actually loves everything and accepts everything as it is. So that, that individual won't be praying because that individual will realize that everything that exists and everything that is happening has a positive result that will arise out of it and accepts the situations as they are, meaning as a means to godly power. And that individual protects everyone and everything, including the soil, the stone, the animal, and the plant.
So these individuals will be the people who will recycle, the people who will be composting. These are the individuals who care for the environment and make sure that everything is protected. And definitely, these individuals are those who see negative, what quote unquote negative experiences as a means, as a stepping stone for higher and higher energies and frequencies, and as another way of them being able to use their intellect and logic to solve those situations and make those situations into something positive. And that individual will not have discrimination consciousness, meaning, oh, I will treat you nice because you gave me a lollipop yesterday or you gave me a nice bonus, so I will treat you nicely, but the guy that didn't give me anything, well, sorry, doesn't count. He's not going to get anything. We treat everyone the same. We treat everyone as a human, as a part of the consciousness totality of Allah. We see everything as being part of ourselves because realize, we actually do realize that everyone is just like us. They may look a little bit different. They may act a little bit differently. However, bottom line, we each one of us have a mission. Each one of us has a destiny path that we need to follow. Each one of us is specifically here to accomplish a certain thing. And those individuals also have a unification spirit, meaning as opposed to, well, I think my way is the best way and all of you better follow what I want to do. It'll be the opposite. It'll be, okay, who's got an idea? We've got a situation here. We've got to accomplish one, two, three, or we're this is happening, this is happening, this is happening. So how do we resolve it? Who's got what ideas? Who's actually gone through this before? And it comes together that it becomes a unification of ideas, gathering of ideas, putting it all together, going into the scientific study or scientific method, meaning, okay, we'll try this. Let's see if what happens. And if it doesn't work, they will try something else. And little by little, little by little, everyone grows and evolves. And the genuine human is one that is, that's its evolution level is equal to the spiritual level. And eventually the goal is to get to the point of having those, just like in the religious dimension, the moral code is completely integrated with us. Right now in the knowledge book dimension, we completely integrate with the consciousness of the awareness of the ordinance. And therefore, we are completely guided through intellect, logic, and awareness to be able to successfully help everyone and fulfill our mission. And the entire objective is for us to be able to get to the point where we grit brain power, we increase our brain power. Um, and it is really exigent for us that our brain power needs to gain more power because it needs to be able to attract unknown energies from unknown dimensions and therefore be acclimated and be able to go to those dimensions um, with ease. And this has been March Batasic and the Knowledge Book Radio um, with March Batasic. That's all the time we have this week. And um, great, but thank you to anyone who has sent their questions. Again, you can text or email messages and questions to me during the week, and we'll cover those at a further time. So please join me every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific, on the Knowledge Book Radio with March Patazic. And you can schedule us for conferences, 973 787 7035. Thank you for listening. And we'll see you again next week. Take care. You've been listening to Knowledge Book Radio with Marge Potasik. Marge was led to the Knowledge Book, a gift to humanity, and it's time of transition to the golden age. It provided the truth and energies and frequencies. Now she shares information from and answers questions about the Knowledge Book with you each Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, on transformationtalkradio.com. For more information, visit Marge at usa.thenowledgebook.net.